happy Sunday everyone um, today just came back from church and uh, I'm wearing my Owl's Eye Canada um, this is one of my favorite Owl's Eye um, and I'm going to share with you how this got uh, to be the outfit that um, I'm so proud to wear and I love to wear so first of all this is Owl's Eye um, our Vietnamese national outfit so the Owl's Eye is the Vietnamese long dress with trousers so we're wearing it with pants like this and it comes together as a set. Uh, em chào chị Mai. Happy Sunday chị. Um, how are you chị? Um, so this is our Outside Canada uniform and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how this Outside came to be. So um, I've lived here ever since I was very young. I would say um, my family, well, me and my aunt, we came to Canada when I was like five, five years old. So I never really knew about my culture. And um, when I was in high school or when I was in like grade seven, grade eight, even in college, um, I didn't really wore outside because I didn't see the importance of it. But um, ever since I start going back on my annual mission trip, uh, the Better Future for Kids mission trip. Since uh, 2008, um, I've learned more about my culture. And since then, I fell in love with my beautiful Vietnamese culture. And one of our culture is our, our traditional Vietnamese outside outfit. Hi, Chi. Thank you. Um, I, um, I love wearing the outside, so I think we're the same. We love the outside. And I think it's not because I find I look uh, different in different outfits. So I find I look sweet when I'm wearing the Alzai. It makes me look more um, yu yang, more gentle. Because if I was wearing like Western clothes, I find I look a bit more um, different. So thank you, Ji. And you obviously look amazing in Alzai, uh, despite of having two kids and you know you you take care of yourself really well so um i i can't compare to you but um i try so the outside uh that i'm wearing right now it's our um national traditional vietnamese outfit uh traditional in the sense that it has a collar like this okay so the collar that i'm wearing is about four uh four feng i believe that's like almost two and a half three inches so the signature stuff within the outside is the actual uh, traditional collar. Of course, throughout history, the outside have changed to different style like open neck or square neck or round neck. But what I'm wearing right now is the uh, traditional form of the Vietnamese outside, which has a collar like this. Um, it has the sleeves. The length of the dress that you're seeing here can range depending on the era. So some era, the length of the outside can be shorter like this, like up to the knee. But now more modern, you can wear different length or whatever length you want. So the one that uh, I'm wearing right now is the outside Canada um, costume, uniform, and it's all the way down to the floor as you can see, or as long as the pants. So, um, the Alzai has been in the Vietnamese history forever, um, and ever since I went back to Vietnam on our mission trip in 2008, um, I see uh, the elderly wore the Alzai. I saw the high school students uh, wear the Alzai to school. I see Alzai everywhere, and since then, I I fell in love with the Alzai. But I didn't know the history of the Alzai until um, I went to San Jose, California in 2016 for the Alzai Festival uh, that was hosted by the brothers and sisters in San Jose. And uh, Jenny Do was the um, organizer of that festival along with many other brothers and sisters. And they put on like the most beautiful Alzai festival that I have ever seen. Like, I've seen uh, events in my community here in Toronto um, that wore the Alzai, but it wasn't like an Alzai festival. 
So when I went to uh, San Jose, California to attend the Aozai Festival, um, I just fell in love with the story, the costumes. They had, um, I think that year I went, it was the story of um, uh, Sơn Tân Thủy Tân. So it talks about one of the Vietnamese uh, fairy tale story of two guys fighting over a girl, a princess, and it, it, they turn it into a play, into like a festival, and it was so beautiful. I saw the princess, she was on a carriage, and she wore this beautiful outfit, Aozai, and you know, they turned the festival into like a beautiful theme. And I went with my friends, um, there were An Nhật, there were Will, there were Thi, there were Hang An. Um, we went to, to see that festival and when we came back, we were so inspired that we, we, we said to our, our, our team that we're gonna make uh, an outside festival for Toronto. And um, obviously it was a dream because we had no connection, we had no, you know, like skill in event planning. We had, like, we all have different professional jobs, but none of it was um, event planning. So the dream was like, there but how do we you know make it happen so I share with many of my friends and people around me my family and um, I've, I've shared with them that I want to bring this festival and do this festival for our community so from there uh, we connected with friends people in the um, community and then after that um, our first Aozai Gala was 2018. We did um, Aozai Gala Saigon Hong Kong Bing Dong. It was like the 60 theme and um, it was so beautiful. So that was our first event. So 2016, we went to a festival in California. We came home, we applied for a nonprofit organization, we signed up our board of directors, and we formed Aozai Canada. And uh, Two years after, 2018, we did our Aozai Gala, which is uh, the Pearl of the Saigon Pearl of the Far East. It was the English, but in Vietnamese it was called Saigon Hong Ngoc Bing Dong. And we had like uh, four designers with different Aozai theme, and it was a beautiful event. And um, it was a great success. And then after the Aozai Gala, um, we wanted to bring it outside because the Aozai Gala was in a hall, a venue. So we wanted to bring the festival or the event outside. So we picked um, Nathan Phillips Square, City Hall, and uh, we wanted to do every two years, so 2018, 2020. But when I called up City Hall and I asked to reserve the venue from 2018, they wouldn't allow us to preserve the space for two years um, ahead. So. They say if I want to do something for 2019, 2020, um, we have to do something for 2019. So that's how the taste of Vietnam came to life. Is uh, we originally wanted to have the outside festival for 2020, but um, it ended up turning into the Taste of Vietnam festival in 2019. So if you follow my uh, Facebook or, or Outside Canada or our Taste of Vietnam Festival, you will see that um, all of our journey I documented. Just simply, um, I like to do these blogs, I like to do these videos of sharing our journey because people don't see the, uh, the behind the scenes. They don't see how much work and all the people involved, but people only see the end result. And I love to um, capture all the journey that everyone contributed so that, you know, our young generation who will carry on this passion and this mission will have some sort of like, you know, documentary or, you know, like something for them to, 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 to refer to so that they, car they can carry on this passion. So um, if you see me doing a lot of these blogs, a lot of these um, videos, um, you know why. And if one day God calls me back or I'm no longer on this planet or on this earth, at least um, I can share with you and leave back the experience that I had 
and the wonderful life I had with my community. So, uh, back to Taste Vietnam. So that's how the Taste Vietnam came to life in 2019. It's because of an accident, accidental uh, dream for 2020. So, those of you who follow my Facebook, uh, Facebook, I have posted so much stuff on Taste Vietnam. But um, how do we have this outside? So um, as an official non-profit registered organization of Canada, outside Canada, we wanted to have a uniform. And um, I was with me at that time. And uh, um, we wanted to do something that was unique, that represent our, our organization. So our organization was outside Canada. So um, I, I said, let's do something with the Canada flag on it. So at that time, um, Anyuk was kind of rough drawing it and uh, stuff like that. And we worked together. And I remember, you know, um, all the things that he's done with me on this journey. And Anyuk was the person that stood by me since day one, even when buying the ticket to San Jose in 2016. He, he didn't hesitate at all. So I owe so much of these beautiful memories and these beautiful experiences um, to Anya, who were the first person who supported my crazy idea. And so um, we were working on the outside Canada uniform and I remember it was that night because we had to work with the people in Vietnam to make this. So he was sketching it, I say, you know, change here and there. So we he did a rough draft of the outside and then we sent it back to Vietnam. Uh, because Vietnam is night, here is day. So when it's night here, it's day over there. So um, after many like back and forth, trial and error, fixing here and there, we finally got our outside Canada made. And this is what it looks like. Um, the front of the outside, it has the Canada flag. So this is truly, you can't mistake this for anything because even from afar, like 20 feet away, looking at this, you can tell it is Canada. So um, it represents our organization, Outside Canada. And we mix the two culture together. Uh, the Vietnamese traditional costume, traditional outfit, with the Canada flag. So we merge the two countries that we love so much uh, into one outfit. So when we we wear it, or when I wear it, I feel so proud uh, to show this off. I, I wear this everywhere, to church, to downtown, to the mall, to like supermarkets, to work. I feel so, um, you know, I wear it with so much pride and um, we do uh, have the Aozai Canada for sale. Uh, it is because uh, we are raising money uh, for our mission and to raise awareness against human trafficking and child exploitation. So I'm just going to share with you a few details about this beautiful design Aozai. So the red is the true red, or at least um, I, I hope it is, is the true red of the Canada flag. So here, our outside is nicely fitted, and we have size from kids like five, six, seven year old, all the way to like you know extra extra large. Like we have all size that will fit everybody, and um, you can either choose to have the length of the owl uh, long, like how I have mine touching the floor, the same length as my pants, or you can have it a little bit shorter like this if you like. So each way you wear it gives you a different outfit. So you can change the length of the, uh, the dress. Um, so that's the front, but the back, you're gonna see it's so beautiful because we added some leaf. So you can see at the back of my outline, we have the leaf cascading down. So when you're walking, okay, when you're walking, the wind blow at the wind blow at the back, it looks really pretty. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me because I was so far. 
But what I was saying is that at the back, we have these beautiful cascade leaf falling down so that when you walk, whether at the front or at the back where you stand, it looks beautiful in to the front and it also looks beautiful at the back as well. Okay? So that's the dress. And uh, another thing is that the um, sleeves. So we have the sleeve very easily. It's non um, tight, like it's very comfortable. Like this is very comfortable. So when you wear it, you will see the sleeve, it's kind of flare out. And when it flare out, you're gonna see our awareness. Hi, and Roger. How are you? And thank you for watching. I'm just sharing our uniform. Um, các bạn nhìn cái tay áo thì đây là lý do vì sao mà Kelly nói rằng cái chiếc áo này nó giúp là tiếng nói để chống tệ nạn buôn người và lạm dụng người trẻ em. Là tại vì trên cái tay áo nó có in cái chữ là stop human trafficking. Um, so when you're wearing this outfit right um, not only it's beautiful on you but it also um, represent you're advocating against human trafficking and child sex slavery with the word so it says stop human trafficking so this outfit when you wear it um, you're not just wearing it as a beauty garment or a beautiful outfit but you're you're raising awareness you're being a voice for those who can't be heard and when people see you wearing this, they will ask you, what are you wearing? Like, what's this outfit? And that's a great way to create a conversation to let people know, you know what? I'm advocating for victims who can't speak. I'm raising awareness against child sex trafficking, human trafficking. And, you know, even though, you know, the, the human trafficking may seem so far that it's not related to you, but it's not just in Vietnam that it happened, but it's happening here in Toronto, in the States. If you've been reading the news, listening to the news, like R. Kelly, the rapper, um, has been convicted for 30 years in prison only. He should have life sentences, but he's in jail uh, for 30 years because of human trafficking. He sexually abused underage girls. So even in Hamilton, there are cases of girls who are being trafficked all over downtown, underage. So it's not far from us, it's not the other side of the world, but it's actually happening in Toronto. And our children, I don't have kids, so I, I don't worry about this, but those of you who are parents, you have girls, you have boys who are teenagers, who are on social media, on Instagram, on TikTok, those are where the pedophile, all of the human traffickers, they prey on our young. And when we don't raise awareness, when we don't speak up against human trafficking, our children, your children are being vulnerable to these human trafficking um, traffickers. And I don't want to see any more children. I don't want to see any woman, any boys um, being sexually abused anymore. So since 2008, I've been advocating for this. And sometimes I feel like a crazy girl going around advocating, speaking about this, doing events to raise awareness. Like sometimes I think people think I'm nuts, but I've met these victims. I. Sorry guys, when I talk about this, I'm very, um, um, sensitive, and I've seen victims, I've met victims, I have victim contacting me, so this crime of human trafficking and child sex slavery do happen. Sorry guys. Uh, you know, usually I'm very, um, strong but when it comes to these topics I'm very um, um, I tend to get a little bit emotional so even if I seem crazy even if you know people are bored of me keep talking about this I will continue to talk I will continue to raise my voice and be a voice for those who can't speak the victims who are trapped in this hideous crime victims who are captured 
in human trafficking and child sex slavery, they can't speak, they can't be heard. So that's where I feel that since I can speak, my voice is heard, I want to be a voice for them. And these are the things that I do to raise awareness, whether putting on events, volunteering for events uh, regarding this cause, or wearing this auzai that is, you know, speaking up for the victims. Um, I do that. And I can't do it alone, nor can any organization out there. We need the whole world to be on this case. We need the whole world to come together to help organization that's fighting against this hideous crime. So when you, you know, a small things you can do, even, you know, buying this auzai, um, help support it, help us run our uh, events, awareness, wearing this and, you know, people asking you about it, creating conversation, um, you know, talking about it to your friends and your neighbors, it helps. And you don't know who is next to you that may be a victim in your own family. And uh, human trafficking and child sex abuse or sex abuse for men, women, children in general. It happens every day. So um, this outside, you will see me wear a lot of it. You will see me post a lot of photos of it. It's because I want to wear it to speak out. I want to be a voice with it. So um, we are going to have an outside parade at the Chase Vietnam Festival. And for sure, this uh, outside Canada uniform will be there and we're gonna have 40 models adults children kids seniors be wearing this and we will have a beautiful parade showcasing the Vietnamese traditional outside along with our beautiful country Canada in one outfit so I strongly I passionately um, ask you if you are watching this video if you have friends family please let them know about the taste vietnam festival um, and invite them to join us invite them to be our voice with us the taste of vietnam is beautiful the food is good the fashion is good the culture is good but above all of those beauty we have a mission and that mission is to be a voice against human trafficking and child sex slavery we want to stop it and um, we can't do it alone. We need you. Um, and uh, I need you. So if you are watching this video, um, if you are following me on my YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, I go on the social media platform because I want to use my voice for this cause. And it doesn't have to be our organization, any organization out there that is advocating for this cause, please lend them a helping hand. Um, this cause that we're fighting for or advocating for is a dangerous, it is a risky cause, but because it's risky, we need to fight for it, we need to be a voice for it. So no more humans, no more children, no more men, women, anybody are a victim of this hideous crime of human trafficking and child exploitation. So. Um, this Alzai uh, is um, available for purchase. If you like to buy it, wear it to support, um, if you would like to participate in our Alzai Festival Parade that's happening at the Taste Vietnam Festival, feel free to follow the Taste Vietnam Facebook page. Um, we have forms up there that you can sign up to volunteer with us. All of our performers, all of our volunteers, all of our vendors, everyone in our community uh, is coming together to do this event and uh, we love to have your support. Come out and join us. Um, everyone is a volunteer. All of our performers, all of our dancers, our volunteers, everyone that's putting on this festival, they are doing it from the passion of their heart. They want to make a difference. So your support means so much to us. So um, those of you who are the volunteers of the Taste Vietnam, those of you who participate in any way that's watching this video, 
Um, I sincerely thank you so much to each and every one of you. Um, no help is ever small. Whether you're contributing your singing voice, whether you're carrying uh, decoration to the event and help set up, whether you're working behind the scenes doing the most smallest thing, every person, hard work, contribution is what makes this event so beautiful. And it's a community event. The Taste Beat Nam is not a business, um, it's not a money making festival, but it is a festival of our community. We want to create the experience that everyone can contribute, anyone can lend a helping hand. Um, whoever have the talent, they can contribute. We want to create a platform for all of our talents, our singers, our dancers, our performers to have a stage where they can showcase all of their beautiful talents. Um, we have the whole Nathan Phillips Square ground where all the vendors can showcase their food, make all the delicious cuisine that they want to share with the world. And our volunteers, our sponsors who want to make a difference. So I passionately um, call out for everyone to uh, come and support. This is not an event of one person or one group. Um, yes, we do have to have paperwork done. We have to form an organizing group just to make things look professional so that we can get the festival going. But even though we're representing and getting the work done legally, it doesn't mean we own it and we don't own it. It is a community event. We're doing this for the community, so it's actually for everyone. So we always welcome all the helping hand. Um, we always welcome your love and support, near or far. So, um, yeah. So if you're seeing me posting a lot of video for the past um, few days or months or years, uh, wearing this outside, today you understand more about it. And um, I wear this outside with so much love because um, not only it represents outside Canada and our mission, but the person who designed this with me um, is a nip. Even though he's no longer here, but every time I wear this, um, I wear it for him. I wear it to celebrate all the contribution that he has contributed. So I hope that um, one day when I'm dead or God call me back with him, um, we are able to leave these um, resources. We are able to leave all of these things that we've worked so hard for uh, at the beginning for our community, especially for our young generation. We want them to remember their roots. We want them to carry on and have something that they can be proud of. So, um, long story short, because I'm going to start crying if I keep talking. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Today we met our organizing team for the first time. For the past year, we just did everything online because it was COVID. But today we get to meet uh, our team and we had a young high school student. The youngest one was 11 years old. She have joined our organizing team, working with all of our board of directors, working in a professional um, business oriented environment so that our young can learn. We want to guide them. Outside Canada and Better Future for Kids and Taste Vietnam, we want to train our young generation. We want them to have hand-on experience so that they can carry on this when we're dead. Because eventually we're not going to be around forever. And we don't want them to have to repeat the same struggle. We don't want them to have to go through the same you know, trial and error that I did. So now that I'm still alive, I want to share this with all of you, all of our young, so that they can continue. And when they continue this, their work will be less hardship, less obstacle than when I had to go through this journey at the beginning. So I did mention um, this is my last year, hopefully. Um, I was going to retire in 2020 after the Aozai Festival in 2020 that we planned it. Uh, but it, because of COVID and the pandemic, we dragged on until 2022. But um, today, this year, 
I hope it's my last year being the president of Outside Canada and Better Future for Kids. Um, I want to pass it on to someone who is more energetic, uh, someone who is more capable of carrying these missions further so that I can step down and you know have less responsibility that I can contribute more of my manpower more of my skill you know hand on uh, because running an organization as a president is a lot of work um, I totally don't think I'm capable but the team you know wouldn't come um, wouldn't come up to take the position so I'm searching for that special someone out there who would take on a president role. Obviously, it has to go through the board vote and all of that protocol, but um, this is my last year, I hope. Um, so I'm going to share everything I know so that the next person who comes up would not have to learn everything from scratch. So if you are a young energetic passionate individual that happened to be watching my video and you want to challenge yourself you want to make a difference um, you're more than welcome to send your resume to info at outsidecanada.org i'll leave the link below um, you know you can join us this year on the take vietnam journey so that you can gain experience and i hope that in 2023 moving forward uh, we will welcome a new president of Outside Canada and Better Future for Kids. And it will make me so happy to see a young generation uh, come up and uh, become a leader. And that's what we want. We want to train new leaders. Because whatever I do, I can't bring it with me when I'm dead. But I can share with you and leave it for you when I'm gone. So. I know it's a lot for you to take in and those of you who have sticked around listening to this video to the end thank you so much it's just i've experienced so much guys i've i've seen so much within these past 12 years of my charity journey that i've seen everyone i've seen things behind the scenes i see all the struggle i see all the compassionate dedicated people i have so much to tell you um of all the things I've seen and all the people in my community that I want to embrace them. I want to tell stories of them. That's why whenever I do a video, I have so much to tell you that it takes forever for me to finish a video. But I don't see a lot of these videos sharing about what our community does. I don't see a lot of video capturing behind the scene moments. And uh, bear with me when I'm telling these stories. Um, and there's going to be a lot more stories to tell you. And I can only tell you when I have no obligation. I don't have too much work uh, with the role of the president. So that's why hopefully um, I can pass on um, this role as the president to someone who is capable so that I can have more time to do more video review. I'll have more time to do uh, other things that support the leader and for me I believe that whether you are a, am a leader or not that's not important the important thing is that I share my journey to the next person who is the leader and I will support them physically mentally spiritually so that they can do the best job they can so it's not like when I'm no longer president I quit and I don't do this anymore I will do even more but at that time, I won't have the responsibility, I, won't, I don't have the obligation of such a heavy weight on my shoulder. So, uh, thank you so much you guys for um, watching this video. Please follow us at the Taste Vietnam Toronto Festival page, uh, Outside Canada page, Better Future for Kids page. Um, so, Better Future for Kids and Outside Canada are the two official registered organization, charitable organization and nonprofit of Canada. So those two organizations is what makes the Taste Vietnam. So Better Future for Kids and Outside Canada are the co-organizer of the Taste Vietnam Festival. I know it's a bit confusing but I hope that's cleared up. So 
please follow the page for updates. Um, if you are wanting to volunteer, we need everyone. We are building a boat, like literally a Vietnamese boat that is like two, three meters long. We need carpenters, we need handyman or woman uh, to come help us. We're gonna have the beautiful long 15 feet windmill that we need volunteers, even kids, like five, six year old, they can put the windmill together, put it on the string and hang it on the tunnel. We're gonna have a lotus. So we're gonna have a lotus ceremony, group day in Hoa Dang, so that we can pray for all the victim of human trafficking. So we're gonna need volunteers to do that. We need performers, we need um, dancers. All of our singers are gonna be singing beautiful songs. So we wanna have it more lively with dancers. So we need everybody. We need the whole community is what I'm trying to say. So please um, join us. Uh, we're doing this together. And it's not just for any individual, it's for our community. We want to celebrate preserve the Vietnamese culture, share with the whole world in this diverse uh, multicultural city, Toronto. And we also want to pass this um, culture and this pride to our young generation. And together, all generation, everyone, all culture, all community, all ages, we are the voice against human trafficking and child exploitation. So thank you so very much. Um, for all the people who have been with us on the journey for so many years. You know who you are if you're watching this video. And we're welcoming more volunteers to join us. And uh, I can't wait to see you at the Taste of Vietnam Festival. Um, if you can't volunteer because life is busy, that's okay. Uh, come out on August 5th and 6th to uh, join us and experience the beautiful culture of the Aozai, uh, the amazing delicious cuisine and um, together let us make a difference. So once again I'm going to do a little bit of a catwalk so you can see the beauty of the Aozai and how it will look. Well it's going to look a hundred times better when it's like a whole parade of Aozai Canada and all the other Aozai colorful that you will see. But I'm just going to do a little catwalk for you okay. So. It's beautiful in the wind. So, thank you so much for watching. This is my Vietnamese Alzai Canada um, uniform. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a happy Sunday with your loved one. God bless you. Stay safe. And um, thank you so much for your love and support. And we'll see you at the Taste of Vietnam Festival, August 5th and 6th, 2022. Okay, bye everyone. Have a good night and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.